Welcome to the virtual premiere of The Gauntlet. I had the fascinating pleasure of being interviewed by Coco for this new work last June. The interview was unlike any other I have experienced, given the expectation that I should be in a constant state of movement. I remember being highly conscious of my movements at the beginning, more so than of what I was saying in response to Coco's thoughtful questions. But with her gentle suggestions of what would suffice as movement and not to worry about having to create some kind of fantastic dance, I relaxed and I soon found it liberating not to have to sit still for the camera as you usually have to for an interview. So in the span of about 20, 30 minutes, I really got used to liking the format. I had of course already become very used to doing online meetings. And so it was poignant to have an interview in which I could feel myself physically occupying space at a time when we were, and indeed still are, physically disconnected, but virtually connected, working at home, which sometimes feels more like living at work. Afterward, I took to moving around during Zoom meetings more often, and I do it now all the time, turning off my camera, but still able to engage when I feel I need a little movement. Almost a year later now, I am delighted to hear Skip and Coco's work come to life through their innovative collaboration with the dedicated and talented choir, our Art Center team, and all the MYUED faculty, staff, and students who contributed to these interviews. Together, they have made this piece into what it is. And I think that the words innovation and collaboration are crucial here. In this challenging time that will continue a while longer, a studio environment that would normally be in one place will spread across the world in all these different locations with choral recordings from Abu Dhabi, Shanghai, and Poland, production from New York and choral direction from the UK. And with what I hear is an innovative sound design technology. Apparently Zoom was involved and so I am sure that these producers had to grapple with the familiar challenges we all have come to know, delayed sound, unstable internet, and above all, forgetting to unmute. But this community came together to forge ahead with a production that had been planned in person, but overcame distance to achieve connection, communication, and true excellence. There is no more poignant example, I believe, of the incredible resilience and creativity that we have witnessed these past 12 months and how creativity and resilience actually stand in a very interesting interaction to each other. So I am proud to have been a tiny part of this great work and I want to thank all of those who have made it happen and wish you a very enjoyable performance. Welcome to the Art Center at NYU Abu Dhabi and the world premiere of Skip Shari and Coco Carroll's The Gauntlet Far Away Together. I'm Bill Bragan, Executive Artistic Director of the Art Center. I want to start by thanking Vice Chancellor Marriott Westerman for that moving and really resonant introduction. Uh, I'm really excited to hear that your participation in the interviews actually influenced your work process, and I can't wait for you to hear the piece. Marriott has been extraordinarily supportive of the Art Center, originally helping to set the public programming mandate for the university in her original role as the, as the founding provost. Now in her role as vice chancellor, we're constantly gratified by her presence in our audiences, her championing of the programs in university-wide forums and in her social media feed, by her work to generate support for the Art Center in the UAE community, and in tonight's case, her willingness to participate in the creative process by engaging in the movement interviews, which were transformed into the text for the libretto. I also wanna give a huge thanks to the staff of the Art Center for all their efforts to reinvent what we do as an online performing art center. This past year has required us to constantly explore new and unknown approaches. And tonight's program especially reflects everyone's willingness and more importantly, their talent in taking on new artistic and technical challenges. And lastly, I wanna thank the Art Center's sustaining sponsor, GAC, as well as our media partners, the National Al Dahad, Abu Dhabi World, Yala Magazines, and Time Out Abu Dhabi. We've got two events coming up in the next week. First, on Monday, April 5th, Manifold, a festival of musical diversity presented in partnership with the NYUAD music program, continues with new sounds for 2021. 
This is a filmed concert featuring classical instruments, dance, and video manipulation to create a one-of-a-kind multimedia experience performed by Christina Iwan, Amil Sain, Kiori Kawai, Aaron Sherwood, and Bettina Schober. And among the works premiering that night are a new work by NYU Abu Dhabi alumnus Cristobal Morian. Next Wednesday, April 7th, we open a five-night run of Theater for One, Here We Are which features a collection of short micro plays created and performed by some of the theater world's most notable writers, directors, and actors, each performed online for a live audience of just one person. Theater for One, Here We Are is inspired by the pandemic, the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment in the US, Black Lives Matter, We See You One American Theater, and other movements fighting racism. Tickets are available now, and as you can imagine, you should book soon. To get all the details, please visit nyuad-artcenter.org on the web, where you can also subscribe to our newsletter, as well as help support the Arts Center's work by becoming a member. You can also get news by following at NYUAD Arts Center in social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you can find live streams and archival events, including tonight's program. Finally, we have a large number of partners who are collaborating with the Arts Center to bring tonight's program to the world. So I want to specifically thank Afikra, a great online uh, speaker and conversation series, Special Olympics UAE, Blank Canvas, the US Mission to the UAE, Women Between Arts, as well as a number of NYU Abu Dhabi departments, the Office of Equity and Inclusion, the Office of Social Responsibility, the Office of Global Education, and the Office of the Vice Chancellor. And with that, it's my pleasure to welcome to the screen, Skip Shari and Coco Carroll, the co-creators of the gauntlet far away together. Hello, Skip and Coco, welcome. Hello. 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 I'm gonna let people at some point later hit the download link uh, where they can get the program. They can, learn a lot, they can learn a lot more about both of you and your history. Uh, but what I wanna do now is have a few minutes of conversation just to set the stage before we let everybody listen to the program. Uh, I'm also gonna remind people right now that for the immersive 3D spatialized sound to have the most effect, closed back headphones are best. So go run and get them if you don't already have them with you. Otherwise, I definitely recommend earbuds rather than listening through speakers so that you, re you can really understand the artistic intention. Uh, and we'll remind you again later to get your headphones. But I wanna start uh, with the first basic question. What is the gauntlet? Uh, I know we've talked about the gauntlet is both a musical form and a musical instrument. So I'm wondering if you could both just explain what the gauntlet is and how it usually works as an in-person event. And as an in-person event, the gauntlet is a, an immersive choir that the conductor plays. Uh, it's called the gauntlet because it's a gauntlet of singers. It is a choir facing a choir in a hallway. We, we do other formations as well. We do labyrinths, we do circle gauntlets, but the basic form is a choir on stools facing the facing each other, and the audience walks upstream as the conductor passes tones woo, to, the, to the singer to the left and to the right, and they pass those tones downstream and across from each other. So instantly I can go woo, 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 and create chords and uh, uh, very close harmony. And I also can pass phrases, sung phrases like sing me a sing me uh, and it close uh, uh, phrases in harmony. And so you're walking up stream of all these singers passing tones and phrases above your head. And then there's several uh, other techniques we use also like hocketing and uh, holding, holding, t holding tones of simple melodies. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very simple and complex art form at the same time. It's a relationship. And uh, it, we also say it collapses the choir back into individuals because you really, with a choir, you don't hear the people singing as individuals, but in this, you really hear them communicating with each other as individuals. So that's, I think that's a simple way to cut, to try to explain it. Great, and then also, Coco, um, if you could, as a yeah. Form, yeah, as a form, um, we call it community inclusive theater because, um, the way that we we do it within a community is we come into a community and I do these movement interviews and then uh, we create the libretto from those movement interviews and so as you're walking upstream of the form yeah. you're hearing um, people people's personal narratives or fragments of stories and this kind of poetic resonance of like how we make meaning of our experience and so as a form what we found is that it, it's a very powerful tool for um, 
also how to engage with community and um, and how to tell stories that would maybe otherwise um, be unsung. And a, and a real important part is the curation of who Cook was going to interview. In this case, it was it was you, Bill, and you gave us amazing people. And we really mm -hmm. asked that we want all levels of society. So in Sydney, she interviewed a, 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 a Im illegal immigrant. Uh, I don't know what the better term would be a in this refugee. case, refugee, but who had to stay underground, uh, transgendered uh, person, and the and the deputy mayor, who is all about permaculture and, uh, and and environmental issues. So it's really we're really trying to, of course, as as the people involved, we our our, our viewpoint is in the piece, but we're really trying to take our viewpoint out of the piece and let the language uh, speak for itself. And in Abu Dhabi, I interviewed um, artists, um, mm. activists, change makers. Um, I interviewed you, Bill. I inter interviewed um, security guard. I interviewed a yeah. um, beautiful array of voices that you will hear this evening. Yeah. Great. And uh, I don't want to give too much away before we ask people to put on their headphones, which hopefully they run and got. But uh, is there, uh, I know in the in the program note, you have some suggestions for embodied. Oh, is he frozen? Um, I don't know if you're frozen or we're frozen, but um, yes, there are embodied movement suggestions in the program. And um, uh, Mostly, um, mostly what I would say is um, there, there are poetic suggestions. Um, one of them is um, to find a place where you can be placeless. Um, and I think that that comes from this um, cultural moment that we're in of the global pandemic and everything um, being um, decentralized and everyone having this sense of placelessness. Um, and uh, and so that's one of the embodied movement suggestions, and it can be interpreted very liberally. Um, another thing that we found is, um, like, when I was listening throughout, like, before, even after I wrote those suggestions, I found um, I just wanted to close my eyes. I wanted to be in the placeless place of my own sort of space. And um, and so I invite you to close your eyes, open your eyes, be inside, be outside. Um, and uh, um, and then um, and to find to feel to feel an embodied sense because all of the language came from these movement interviews and they came from an embodied answer and so um, I invite you all to find an embodied place to listen to um, the gauntlet and also to let your environment also come in. The, yeah, it's um, great if the sounds are, while we were composing this, occasionally uh, the sound of our child would come through and yeah. the sounds in your, in, your, in your environment become part of the piece too. Yeah. I think we are going to go uh, ahead to the audio of the piece, is that right? Um, I think I see Bill coming back on. Yes, we're, we are having Zoom <laughs> issues already. <laughs> but we can kill time until Bill I'm, I'm back on a different device. If anybody can find, can you hear me? Am I here? We can hear you. We can hear you, Bill. This, ah. is, this is kind of a perfect illustration of what can happen. Yeah. 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 Welcome back. Um, all right. So um, I think that it sounds like we were probably, you vamped for a while, I vamped for a while, people had time to go get their headphones. And uh, it's a great time to now uh, ask people to put on your headphones and uh, listen to the world premiere of the Thoughtlet.
I am a foreigner. Wherever I go, wherever I go, wherever I go, is this so? somewhere I am from anymore. I don't feel there's, don't feel there's somewhere I am a foreigner. These days, I have a distinctive feeling that I am in my past, that I am in my future.
I flee the things that I once told myself I wore. I flee the things that I once told myself I wore. I flee the things that I once told myself I wore. I flee the things that I once told myself I was. I flee the things that I once told myself I was. I flee the things that I once told myself I was.
This one. I saw this one, a little child. His eyes haunted me. So I drew him and I painted him. When I finished, I felt like he became very real. So I started destroying the paint, but I kept the eyes. I kept the way he was looking out at me. And then, from a little boy, he became an old man. It's raining. This image keeps coming up from my childhood. What's uh, I think it's because I have this feeling of my mother's days. long black hair brushing me just for years. As she was over my crib, the stories are happening. Stories I can't believe your country to wake up bright just every day. So I miss always my parents, my family, my life is completely changed. The life I was living in my country was a completely different life. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. just walked out of his room. He's nine. People ask how old is your son? Eleven. Statistically, we know black children and Latinx are assumed to be older than they are. And so when they make innocent mistakes or do things that children do, they're evaluated as someone who's older. So a 12 year old with a toy gun is. Here's a grown man with a gun. This absence of innocence is something to contend with. My son, it seems ridiculous to say, I wish I'd raised my son in a rougher neighborhood so that he'd be more prepared for the life he's going to live. It's not inaccurate. I, I always struggle with not knowing where I am from. My parents tell me where they're from, but I don't think it's true. I forget their opinions. I must have come from somewhere else. It's hard to find where I belong. So I kind of got always trying to. I forget what I remember is looking in the mirror and my face in our parlor room. I must have been 11. And who is this? Who am I? It was 
brightening the pastor that I need to pray for someone, but not with their after face, my brothers, and their, their eyes, I was and then worried. I feel a screen in my face, my community. I look forward a bit, I had to dress in my eyes, like and who is this, oh, this is who, who am I, this is it someone else who wants this, and who is this, oh, this is who am I, this is it someone else who wants this, and who am I, who wants this, this is it someone else who wants this, who is this, who am I? It was frightening. The visual confrontation with her face, her eyes. I feel screen in my face. I lean forward a bit. I have stress in my eyes. The word for human, in Arabic, is insan. It comes from the root word nausea, to forget. The human condition is a state of forgetting and remembering.
What would you give someone if you could give home? Home? What home? I would give this person a nest. An old growth forest. A city where the bars are filled with live music. Belonging without a passport. A cactus in bloom. An opera. Agency. A room emanating with laughter. Getting your flowers before you die. A painting with syncopated autumn colors. A salsa dance with my grandfather. A salsa dance with a stranger. I would give a gathering with friends. A place to recharge, a comfortable bed. A strong shower and a well-stocked bar. A pool, body floating in water, like flying in the sky. A moment of suspended judgment, a camera, friends. A chance to finish what you started. A chance to provide for your family. A chance to hold your children.